Hello everyone, welcome back to Angela's Craft Room, independent stamping up demonstrator in Australia. I've got this card to showcase to you today and we'll go through and we'll actually make it but we're going to use different colours and some different DSP. I did about a year ago on my channel um, do a tutorial on the curtain fold, half curtain fold like this one but I just thought it'd be nice to come back and use some of the new embellishments that Stamping Up have released and their new DSP and just a couple of their other new products just to show you what can be achieved with them. So with this one um, the base card is is very vanilla and then inside I've put a piece of Blushing Bride and I've just stamped the smaller rose from the Graceful Garden stamp set that little one up there it's a beautiful stamp set that one and then onto the front what I did was I cut out a piece of Blushing Bride which was four and a quarter inches by five and a half and so that I used that as the mat because this has several layers to it on the front so I didn't directly work on the front of the card I had like the one we're going to do is going to be in pool party so I had a piece of blushing bride like this and I worked on that and just put layered it up as we went and then I used a piece of designer series paper which was from the bundle of love designer series paper it's beautiful designer series paper it has a gold pattern on one side and on the flip side it has a corresponding one in this case it has blushing bride so I thought the half fold card the half curtain fold card would look nice just seeing that the other side of this designer series paper there so what I did was this is a different one but I just took a piece of the bundle of love DSP and I'll go through the measurements when we do the card and then on my piece of blushing bride I glued that onto there so I had this this side on there and then when I cut my piece of gold that I was that I did the folds on then I glued that onto top of there then I added the new black basic black shimmer ribbon which is three and an eighth three eighths of an inch wide or one centimeter it's a really lovely um, ribbon just got that glitter through it and then these little embellishments here you get so many in them you get these big ones and then you get all these little ones and I filled up three containers they come in a package and I emptied them out and put them in here and I needed three of these containers so you get quite a lot and the really good thing with these is you can pop that out and so you you could just use that or just use that or if you wanted to keep it together and just glue it together whichever you wanted so the good thing that I like about these wooden embellishments is you can color code them using your ink pads with whatever color scheme you're working on on your card so I've done I used my tear and tape to put my first big heart down and then I used the fine tip glue pen to do the two smaller hearts and then just using the stitch shape framelits I did my sentiment and cut it out and this one I used the layering ovals now these sentiments here they come from the stamp set Pretty Kitty so it's a little kitten one 
but it's got some lovely little sentiments in it as well so you know mix match your um, stamp sets I use my sentiments from all different stamp sets so and the other thing I wanted to touch on is you can see the diamond shapes up here that I've created with the new embossing embossing paste okay so what you'll need to do when you, you get that you need to buy the set of tools that comes with it so they're the three tools that come with to use the embossing paste and what I do is what I did do was I used my silicon mat because obviously it's white but you can use you can make it any color you want and I must do a tutorial for you on it to show you how I do it um, so I used the stencil packs the new stencil pack that came out it's called the Pat pattern party decorative mask and I used the the diamond one okay should be able to see that yeah I used the diamond one so what I did was just put some paste onto some embossing paste onto my silica mat and then I put two drops of blushing bride ink from my ink refill mixed it all up and then I applied it over my stencil and there is a few tricks about applying the embossing paste and making sure that you do get a lovely smooth finish so I will come back in another tutorial and show you how I did that but one big tip I would say to you is it does take a couple of hours till it's really dry really hard dry so what I like to do is I do I do my panel and I'm and I do the embossing paste on my panel the night before and then it's all ready to use the next day okay so that's that card so we'll come back later in another tutorial and brush on the embossing paste and there is something else I want to add to the inside of that card so we'll do that as well so to start with my base card is eight and a half inches and you'll notice that I'm giving you different measurements to what I normally do for this half curtain fold so it's eight and a half inches by five and a half inches and then score at four and a quarter and then you're going to burnish that and then inside the card I've cut a piece of pool party and that measured for the inside of the card four inches by five and a quarter and I've just stamped with with um, basic black archival ink from stamping up and just cut out that little flower and put it inside you could quite easily just stamp it directly onto the card okay so that's the that's the base of the card so we're going to set that aside and we're going to bring in a piece of pool party and this is all on the front of the card it measures four and one quarter inches by five and a half and then the DSP that we're going the DSP that we're going to put on there is four and a quarter by three inches so I'm going to pop, hang on, I've lost a piece, oh, I had it ran the wrong way, sorry. So as you can see I've used a different stencil. Um, last night I did this one and I just did it in a corner in up in the corner so that's that is the front of the card but first you need your back it would look like this just a plain pool party which as I said which measures 
four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, then we're going to turn it over. So we've embossed it already, and then we're going to pop this piece down on here. So to do that, I'm going to use some multi purpose liquid glue. I do really like this half fold and I, there's a couple of different curtain folds that you can do and they're just so effective. So we just want to pop it down. So I'm going to turn it round because I want it to be perfectly flush down the bottom and with the multi-purpose glue, let's hope my head's not in the way, um, with the multi-purpose glue I can slide that down you can see that I'm still able to move it slightly so then we've got that front piece on there like that so then we're going to set that aside and our next piece, this is the piece that we're going to score. So I'll just put my glue away and bring in my stamping up trimmer which has the scoring blade as well as the cutting blade. That's why I really like the stamping up trimmer. So to start we've just see which way I want it so we'll go this way so our first score so this at this measures five and three quarters of inches long five and three quarters by three inches wide so we're working on the long side first and we're going to score that at three three quarters of an inch so you can use your scoring board if you want to but I just find it just as easy to do it this way so it's three quarters of an inch there then we're going to move it across to the one inch and then I'm just going to turn it it's just when you only have to do half an inch or an inch or three quarters it's I like to use this side so it's just the same as if I had to hold it here or here if I had to hold it here and score the three quarters of an inch but it's just easier for me to do the other way so we've scored it at three quarters of an inch one inch so now we're going to score it at one and three quarters. And then again at two inches. And then at two and three quarters. Just be careful not to use your cutting blade, I've done it before. And then we're going to finally score at three inches. Okay, so then we're finished with the scoring. So then the first one's going to be a mountain fold. So I'm going to roughly fold these first. So as I've used this side to put down first on my card, I want this side to be the side that's showing as the curtain fold. So then we just, so it's just mountain fold, valley fold, mountain fold, valley fold. So mountain fold, if you, if you haven't done these sorts of folds before, Mountain, just think of the mountain, it goes up and the valley goes down. So that's the easiest way to 
when you get into doing these different folds if you haven't done them before. So then what we need to do before we get too involved in burnishing and gluing it all down on the so I'm going to have to do this so we're going to line we want to line the short side up at one and a half inches and then bring this way this way one and a half inches on your on your scored lines we need to do it so that goes up there to one and a half inches and then we bring the last scored line into the track here so just make sure that still stays up there at one and a half inches. Inches. And then we're just going to chop that piece right off. Now we're just going to grab a bone folder and we want to really burnish these pieces, these folds down and as you see it, as you do it you will see that the opposite side shows through like a curtain. So then I just turn it over and you just want to really burnish that back side of your designer series paper. So when I turn it over, it's going to sit there like that. So then we're going to grab a uh, tear and tape. And what we need to do is hold those in place and we just want to put tear and tape over all those folds because that's going to hold it all in place for you. So I like to do it, have quite a bit of tear and tape on those folds because you don't want them to come adrift. And then we're just going to peel those off. And then we just need to put a little bit more on the on the sides that don't have any tear and tape so right down that side This is quite a long tutorial to what I normally do but I just felt it was important just to point out a few things that I do on this card. So then you can go and make your own and try out the different technique. Peel them off 
and it is a very strong adhesive as you can see my fingers are getting stuck to it as I remove the backing and you've got to be very careful when you're laying this down because once tear and tape goes down it's not going to come back up so that's going to so what I do is I hold put my card like this and just put it very lightly down on the side looking at the bottom so you've got that piece slide your finger and then that should sit right on that side which it is going to do for me so then you've got the lovely pink flowers showing through at that bottom corner Okay, so then we're just going to we're going to add some of the new ribbon. Oh, also, this um, designer series paper is one of the new ones. Also, it is Petal Garden, and it comes in a six inch by six inch paper pad, which is ideal for card makers. So now we're just going to add some of the new classic weave ribbon, which is the Soft Sky which is also three eighths of an inch wide or one centimetre so then we just want to pop some tear and tape just on the back and I can just see the top of the other side that I've just stuck down so that's where I want it to be then just take that piece off so just pop your ribbon on the back just on the side like that don't don't put it down because otherwise your tear and tape is going to stick just want to move it up a little bit so I just want it to go uh, across the top of that top panel and then that's just going to adhere to the tear and tape at the back for me. So I'll just snip off that little bit of excess so I don't have bulk underneath my card like that then I'm going to adhere that to my card and then we can put them we'll be ready to put the sentiments on it so I think I will just use my multi-purpose glue so that I am able to move it around we're just going to I just grab hold of it on the ribbon and you will want that to be flush to the top of your card so that's a good thing with the multi-purpose glue we can move it and just quickly have a look on the other side to make sure that we do have it flush which we do and yes yeah, so I did add a 
just a row of pearls at the top before coming on camera just to save time because I knew it was going to be a long tutorial. And then what I've done, I've stamped out Happy Birthday. Now this one is from the Special Celebrations which is a two CD package and it's just full of wonderful sentiments and we're going to just I think I just have that down there and I do apologize I forgot to grab my dimensionals so I'm just going to pop these so just four dimensionals on there and that can just be one thing is where the emboss, embossing paste is it when you're using I found when using the stamping dimensionals it becomes a lot more of a strong adhesive than it normally is so because once you've got it down there I wouldn't like to pull it up So we've got happy birthday there and then we'll just pop a couple of dimensionals on the back of this smaller sentiment. Now I have stamped out and cut a flower. So we want to pop that one down there a little bit and you could do you could put these ones on there as well it would be a lot quicker but I did stamp out this image of the butter of the flower from the graceful garden graceful garden stamp set so I'm just going to quickly colour that and it's, it's, it's not going to take very long. So we'll do the leaves first. So we press in on our stamping. Just press in on your stamping up pad. And I've got my apple painter here at the side with my paper toweling. And you've seen me do this several times. So... It's just very lightly, if you've got a bit too much on there, just dab it onto your paper towel. Just be careful going to the edges. And you don't always have to keep going back into your palette if you don't if you just want you know come in some of the leaves a bit lighter I'm making the bigger leaves a bit darker but this is a very quick image to color in so I'm only doing it very quickly for you so you can see I've got a bit too much water on there. But if you use a really good watercolour paper, it does, it will take all the water without running outside the lines.
So you can see how quickly that was just to do up the leaves and then we just want to do the flower. So I'm just using wiping off the off my aqua painter wiping off the green and then going into crushed curry. Then I'm just going to start in the center just very quickly colouring it. Taking it out to the outside petals. Just, just getting some water and a bit of layering down over the whole flower. So it's going to be, if you have a look at a, a rose, the centre is always darker. So where the stamp is like very, it's got the black very edged into the stamp already. That's where the artist has put in the light and shade for us already. So it makes it a lot easier to know where we need it to be a bit darker. And you will notice that as you watch my tutorials, I do like to fussy cut and cut my images out, but it's not for everyone. So, you know, as long as you're stamping, using an archival link onto um, watercolour paper, just stamp it on and just colour it. And then you can just cut that down into a mat and just add it to your card. Now normally I'd put a bit more colour on there but I am conscious of the length of this tutorial so I'm not going to go into it too much more deeply for you. So that's just another technique for those that haven't seen that. But And then I'm just going to pop that on there. So it won't take, it's dry already. So I'm just going to put a piece of tear and tape right across the middle and then I'm just going to adhere that to the ribbon where I've got the tear and tape. I'm not going to worry about putting glue all over the, the back of this one because the tear and tape it just it won't move once you've got it down. So just make sure you put it down on the ribbon. So there's your other card for today. So that's just using different designer series paper. I've shown you how to do the embossing, but I will come back and show you how to do the embossing, like adding colors so that you can color code any card. So Stamping Hub has an awful lot of different colors in card stock, but if you have the refill, you can color code your white embossing paste to what other, whatever colour you need. So this was the first one that I did and this is the second one. So I hope you'll give those techniques a try and until next time, happy crafting!